Coming up on today's show... Meet Jay, the barber who takes his work to the streets, cutting for the community. Stressed at university? Well, we got some tips from the experts. He's the latest superhero on Netflix, but who is Marvel's Luke Cage? Hello and welcome to Friday First, live from our Media City UK studios. I'm Luke. And I'm Danielle. And today we'll be bringing you the latest stories from this week. First up on today's show, our reporter Gerard Mannion visited a barber in Cell who's helping to trim the problems of homelessness in Manchester. It's Monday morning here in Sale, and I thought I needed a bit of a haircut. So I've come to Skullfade's Barber to meet Jed King. But Jed's uh, not just your average everyday barber. Korea. When he's not running a shop, Jay gives up his days off to go out into the streets of Manchester to meet the homeless, give them food, a haircut, and begin the process of getting them off the streets. I just decided to do it. I'm lucky enough to have a successful business, and so it's time to start giving something back. You know, I always ask what the story is. A very common scenario for these guys on the street, you know, they don't have that connection that everybody else has. You know, you have a bad day, you can call your mum, you can call your dad, you can tell them about it, you can deal with it. These people haven't got anyone. Uh, I was in the army. Well, before this, I was a plumber, actually. When I left the army, I, I, I retrained as a plumber. I worked as a plumber for a little while. I hated it. Absolutely hated it. So, so this is a family trade. I've got two brothers who are barbers as well. So we've got a little team that goes out. It's not just haircuts. You know, we have addiction coaches come out with us. So, so it's a process, so you know, when you make them feel good and give them some self-esteem, that's the state of mind where you're ready for help from a qualified person, and that's where the addiction coaches come in. I don't think you can ever get comfortable sat on the pavement and sleeping, and sleeping on the street at night. Uh, it's all they know, and it's survival, you know, it's just that's how they know how to survive. Yeah, it's early days, we've got people that we've seen and we've spoken to and we've given advice on rehoming and given advice on addiction and you know given that lift and then we've not seen them again we told them you can go here to get this you can go there to get that and then when you don't see them again i like to think you know they're off the street or they're in a hostel or they're on the next stage you know it seems like it's still early days for jed and his cause but with the way things have picked up steam there's no doubt that they're getting ever closer to our mission of spreading love and kindness in the community of manchester Stressed or anxious at university? Priya Mafaru visited the wellbeing team who know just how to help. Stress is something we all have to deal with at university. To tackle this issue, the University of Salford have organised wellbeing workshops in order to help students and to prevent them from suffering in silence. Workshops include handling anxiety, self-esteem and procrastination. Um, the workshops are very much put in place really to help students to I suppose, build skills in certain areas. So if they, if they find that stress is an issue, which of course at university it can be quite common, it's looking at how they can develop some really good strategies to help to avoid any pitfalls. Often if we find that if they're taking proactive measures and they're putting in place good techniques, then that will stand them in good stead and mean that it could prevent issues from happening later down the line. One in ten young people will experience a mental health problem. Three in four of those young people fear the reactions of friends when discussing their mental health. I think first, I think the thing that I would always say is talk, communication, because I think there is, I think the stigma around mental health is coming down, um, which is a really, really good thing. People are more and more able to come and access support. Um, it's not completely gone though and a lot of people may get to a crisis point before they realise or, or, or admit that they need help with something. I think we need to get rid of this notion that it's strong to, I need to be a strong person, I don't need to talk about my, I don't need to talk about my issues. I think we need to actually see that it takes great strength to actually admit something isn't going right for us, admit that we may need some help. Students should visit the student channel or alternatively speak to a member of the wellbeing team to find out more about the workshops available and hopefully activities like this will decrease the amount of people suffering mental health problems. 
Journey Festival celebrates the creativity and culture that refugees bring to the UK. The festival is currently displaying pieces of work in Satan Square and aims to host full events in 2017 and beyond. Theo went along to find out more. The Calais jungle is often associated with refugees, asylum seekers and immigrants. Words which often paint a negative picture. Manchester's first refugee art festival hopes to change that. It's really easy to forget that refugees and asylum seekers are people and that as well as the very basic kind of human needs that people might have like um, food, water, a roof over their head, there's also much more kind of deeper and tangible needs that people have like creative needs. Celebrating the artistic talent of the refugees, Journey Festival is hosting creative events. Imagine living in a kennel such as this, without your friends, family or even people you know. Well, Manchester-based art group Nomad Clan went over to the Calais jungle and have come back to share some inspirational stories that they found through street art. Trying to capture the level of chaos that there is in the camp. Something like this is, is brilliant because what, how often do you see people celebrating the achievements or the art of refugees, of asylum seekers. There are up to 123,000 refugees living in the UK, of which 45,000 are asylum seekers. I was feeling sorry for myself and blaming myself why I came and I didn't even ask to come here. Then I turned around to say if I don't, if it doesn't start with me to make a difference, nobody will. The festival hopes to bring communities together through art. The Urge Kumba, SQN News. A new project called Forest City Park aims to connect seven existing parks into an 800-acre green space for the community. Martino Mosca Riello reports. Built on Salford's industrial past is Drinkwater Park, a beautiful natural space only three miles away from Manchester city centre. But soon the park is going to enlarge in size, incorporating parts of Salford, Barry and Bolton to become City Forest Park. This will be one of the seven parks that will bridge together to become one massive 800 acres green space around Salford. The, the parks are already there and they, they, they are linked up, um, but the, the, there's improvements that need to be made in terms of pathways and access points and, and just making people more aware of, of the fact that the site's here so that it can be utilised properly. And there's nothing else quite like it. It, it, you know, it would be the, it is the City Forest Park would be the biggest green space in Greater Manchester, um, within a mile or two miles outside of Manchester and Salford city centres. I mentioned before it's 330 hectares in size, that's bigger than Central Park in, in um, Manhattan. So imagine that Manchester had the, its own equivalent, Greater Manchester. Taking off soon, the project will provide dog walkers, cyclists and walkers alike a new way of experiencing the city's hidden treasures. Martina Moscariello, SQN News. But that's not the only thing that is happening in Manchester. This week marked the start of the snooker season with the English Open tournament. Joey Payne went down to Event City to try and get his hands on the million pound jackpot. The first ever Home Nation snooker series started in Manchester yesterday as Event City played host to the greatest and the very best names in the modern game. And this is what they'll be playing for, the brand new Steve Davis Trophy, the English quarter of four new accolades in British snooker. This week, £70,000 in the pot for the winner. If anyone were to be victorious in the Northern Irish, Scottish and Welsh tournaments as well, they'd be an instant millionaire. But who will it be? Jimmy White. My childhood hero, so to speak. Many, many, he's been that many years, he's almost as old as me, really. I have to be biased and say my son, Ross Muir from Edinburgh. And when they weren't supporting heroes and family, the audience could play themselves against a teenage snooker prodigy from Oldham. Well, I'm the under 14 champion of England, so I've come uh, so people can challenge me and see what, what it's like and stuff. Who are you most looking forward to see playing? Uh, probably like Judd Trump and stuff, because good part of him to play. And who do you think has the best chance of winning it? Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, because he's in good form at the moment. Trump defeated O'Sullivan just two days ago, but there's no break for either player as they start their Home Nations campaign this evening. Not bad, but I think Ryan might have a better chance at winning that million. Joe Payne, Keys News. 
In recognition of World Mental Health Day, which was Monday, our reporter Jordan Davies headed to Bridgewater Amateur Boxing Club to speak to a boxing coach and mental health sufferer, Lee Whitehead. Today is Mental Health Awareness Day, and after recent comments from Barry McGuigan and Frank Warren, perhaps it's here in the boxing gym where people are affected the most. I took to Bridgewater Amateur Boxing Club to speak to Salford boxing coach and mental health sufferer Lee Whitehead about his thoughts on the issue. Mental health issue, you said discuss with Frank Warren and Barry McGuigan, yeah. is a major, um, major problem with um, ex-boxers. You know, I don't know if it's in the punches or maybe when, you, when your adulation's gone, mm. when, you, when your spotlight's gone and then they've got to come down. Especially, you know, he said it's the, the lower edge of ones of the boxing. Yeah. So, yeah. They're the ones that are taking pounding to be me out. Yeah, something's got to be done, yeah, you know, from the grassroots and the amateur grass boxing, you know. But are they sort of some sort of fund? So the boxing fraternity are in agreement. It'll be a long time yet before mental health issues are canvas. Jordan Davis, Key News. Now, Luke Cage has been a huge hit on our screens in the last month, but who is the new Marvel superhero? Our entertainment correspondent, Carl Bishop, is here to tell us more. So, Carl. Yeah, so Luke Cage is the new Marvel Netflix series. Um, if you're familiar with the, the rapidly expanding Marvel universe, you will have met Luke Cage before in last year's uh, Jessica Jones. Well, now Cage has his own, his own show, and he's moved to Harlem, New York City, and he is now, uh, he's found himself fighting the, the mob and corrupt politicians in order to protect the, the citizens of Harlem. One thing that's been praised in particular is the soundtrack. Would you care to tell us anything in why that may have yeah, received so, better reviews? So the soundtrack is it's full of hip hop, soul music. It's very much in line with the, uh, the black exploitation genre. I've heard it been called uh, neo black exploitation. So. Luke Cage, uh, when they created the comic in the 70s, he, he, this was essentially in, um, in reference to the black exploitation genre. And they've took this with the show and they've really took on the hip hop soundtrack. They've got a primarily, primarily black cast and um, they get this real sense of black community. You know, we're all, they're all brothers and sisters in the community. And that's what they're really trying to push and what's really setting Luke Cage apart in this uh, series of Marvel TV shows. In terms of, I believe that Luke Cage is the first black superhero to enter our TV screens within just over 20 years now. So why do you think it's important in today's culture to have a black superhero? It, it, it's very important, especially with, they've shown themselves to be quite prescient with the, the storylines they've, they've, uh, they've run this year. There's a there's an undercurrent of um, if you're familiar with the Black Lives Matter movement, yeah. matters movement, and we find that during the show, the, a uh, a policeman is murdered and a and a teenager is brutally attacked, and we find that this feeds into the the Black Lives Matter movement and really makes a brave statement. That's great. And how would you say it compares to other Marvel action series? I think it, it's probably it's in the top two. Uh, I liked uh, Daredevil before it, and the the only problem with with Luke Cage this year is they've, they've thrown in a lot of, a lot of elements. It's a superhero show. It's a black exploitation show, and they're trying to push this brave political uh, message through it. And it, it's tough to bring all those ideas together into a cohesive piece, I think. And would you recommend maybe someone who isn't really a Marvel fan, would you recommend that they give this show a watch? Yeah, I think it, it, it's definitely more than just a superhero show. So I think there's something in there for everyone. And if you had to rate out of five, what would you give it? Oh, I, I, I wouldn't give it a five out of five because of the problems I've already addressed, but I'd definitely give it a four. Four. That's a... It's a good, Mark. Do you think you'll give it a watch, Luke? Possibly. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> I think you will. I might have to yeah. watch, I'm not really a Marvel fan, but uh, definitely give it a go. Thank you, Carl. It's... Don't forget you can stay up to date with the latest news, sports and entertainment online at keysnews.net. <laughs>